Hey everybody, Matt Brown here. Just want to take a minute to read an article that I wrote today, March 11th, 2015. It's called Metal Detector Finds Made in South Dakota. Scroll down here. It says the streams and fields called out to them and they just knew that they had to be explored. Cindy was a strong, strong-willed, blonde-haired woman and Joe was a dark-haired man with a passion for treasure hunting. They had been married for almost 10 years and Joe had talked her into going metal detecting with him one day. They would often travel to new places and were both willing to tote around a metal detector to see what they could uh, discover. They had decided to stop in South Dakota while on their trip across the country and wanted to search for gold. They would often pan streams for gold and search old fields with metal detectors. They had a habit of stopping to get permission from the landowners first to make sure they were free to keep what they had found. Most of them didn't mind and would often wish them luck before they started. They had found a good area to begin exploring and after talking to the owner for a few minutes, the two set out on their adventure. They were both determined while in search for, while in search of buried gold in the South Dakota hills. They would usually go in different directions, but were always able to stay in touch by using their walkie-talkies. These were great to have because cell phones were largely unresponsive in remote places like this. Scroll down. As they came to a small creek bed before a wide open field, Sydney worked the upper area of the stream while Joe walked to a small pool downstream. The water was still very cold as it was the beginning of spring. And there had been plenty of snow melting from the harsh winter. Sydney moved her metal detector through the gently flowing stream, taking in the delightful scents of flowering bushes and weeds. Her metal detector went off suddenly and she took her trowel out while putting some of the loose gravel into her pan. She worked the pan and separated the gravel at the same time while spotting gold colored flakes at the bottom. Taking a magnet, Sydney ran it over the gold colored flakes only to find that a few of them stuck to the magnet. Modern prospectors use a magnet to tell the difference between real and fake gold in the field. Fake gold is called iron pyrite, while nicknamed fool's gold by old prospectors. She was encouraged though because most of them didn't stick to the magnet and they were probably real gold. She put them in her zippered pouch that was perfect for storing valuable fawns. Meanwhile, her husband Joe had found a rusted digging tool and realized that old time prospectors had been this way. He hoped that he would get lucky and maybe find an old coin or, or two that may have been lost. Uh, a sudden strike from his metal detector led him to discover a few small gold nuggets. He separated out uh, in his pan and tested them the same way Sydney had. He then moved around the perimeter of the pool that was, as it was quite shallow and the water inside the creek came up to about halfway on his boots. He found an old strap with a rusted metal buckle on it and figured that it had once belonged to another gold prospector. But to read the rest of this article, just go to needbucksnow.com to get my newest articles and reviews. Just put your email address in the easy ways to make internet income and get started today. Thank you. Bye.